helming the coverage here for the uh, rest of the night. Remember, we're live till 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 1 a.m. Eastern. But we do want to go over to our friend from Fox 11 in Los Angeles, Alex Michelson, who's still in Washington, D.C., post-inauguration for Biden's first full day in office. Uh, Alex, how is it going over there? And I had a question for you. Are there still National Guard troops out and about and on the ground as well? Yeah, Andrew, good to see you. Good evening. Uh, there are still some National Guard troops, uh, especially guarding, so for example, right behind us, that's the Capitol and the area around it is guarded. And we do see some of those troops there keeping people away from the Capitol itself. But some of the, the sort of outer ring, uh, which was shut down in the previous few days, uh, a lot of those streets around the Capitol that were all shut down, a lot of those streets slowly reopening today, the National Mall itself uh, slowly reopening. Um, if you remember the, the field of flags that was put out on the National Mall in replacement of the people that are usually there for the inauguration today, um, the mall opened up. They allowed people to come in and take those flags with them as souvenirs. I was able to take one, spoke to a lot of people who were excited to hold on to a piece of history, to hold on to some of those flags. Um, so you can tell that, that the city itself is is breathing a bit of a sigh of relief after all of that tension over the last few weeks, really, uh, leading up to that inauguration itself. And one of the questions going forward is going to be, you know, is the, the, the security situation there right now, does that become a permanent thing? Um, because, you know, it, it's called the People's House for a reason. Um, and Congress has been a place that tour groups are usually in and out of. Uh, that has been lessened a lot because of COVID-19. And now it's been, uh, you know, taken to a complete stop um, due to the, the security concerns and COVID-19 together. It'll be interesting to see in, in the months and years ahead uh, what happens there. Um, in terms of uh, Joe Biden himself and his agenda, COVID-19, as we've been talking about, is you know uh, priority number one uh, he signed a series of executive orders on that today he had anthony fauci at the white house doing a briefing at the white house um, and he's trying to take action um, to try to stop this pandemic but the pandemic continues to get worse and worse andrew yeah definitely alex and you know biden has a lot on his plate inheriting a lot of these uh um you know crises from the the previous administration as well um he and we've been talking about these executive actions all day here on News Now, and, and a lot of them have to do with the coronavirus, but also, um, you know, in regards to the environment, uh, immigration as well. But this is this is kind of customary for incoming presidents to use their executive authority, isn't that right? Right. So executive orders is something that have real or executive actions is something that has really grown um, in recent administrations as Congress behind me has gotten more and more dysfunctional and unable to pass much. Executive actions has been something that presidents like to do because they can do it on their own. They can do it quickly and it makes things happen. The problem with an executive action is that the next executive can take the opposite action and there's really nothing to stop them. So when Donald Trump came in, he reversed a lot of what Barack Obama did. When Joe Biden is now coming in, he's reversing a lot of what Donald Trump did by executive action. Passing actual legislation through Congress, that's really the way the Constitution was set up. That's really what's supposed to happen. That is harder to overturn going forward. But unfortunately, um, Congress has been so unable to do much of anything that presidents have uh, have grown to like executive actions. Even people like Donald Trump, who criticized all the executive actions when he was running against President Obama, found it to be something very convenient when he was in office. Yeah, that's right, Alex. And, uh, um, you know, they have the power to wield the, the executive authority because, like you said, Congress behind you uh, is quite dysfunctional. But let's talk about that Congress. It's a, it's a new Congress, uh, the 117th Congress now in both uh, both houses are under Democratic control. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, the, kind of, the kind of power sharing agreement between now new majority leader Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell and see, um, you know, what they can get done since they do control uh, both houses. Um, just kind of in your estimation, in your view, do you think this will be, you know, easier for Biden's cabinet picks uh, to get confirmed? We saw some get confirmed already. Uh, and the impeachment trial that's looming with reports that we've heard Mitch McConnell wants it kind of delayed until mid-February so Trump's lawyers can mount their defense. Right. 
Well, look, having a, a Democratic majority um, will most certainly uh, make it easier for Joe Biden's cabinet picks to be confirmed. Um, remember, the majority controls all the hearings. Um, the majority controls when things are voted on. Um, so those are a big deal. And essentially, a cabinet pick only needs 50 votes. So Democrats do have the ability to basically pass all of Joe Biden's cabinet, assuming there aren't uh, need 50. One person breaking off, obviously, um, means that you can't get it done. You need pad. Um, I think what you're going to see in, in this in, in this Senate with a 50-50 breakdown is a lot more power for the moderates. Um, people like Joe Manchin of West Virginia, uh, you know, Mark Kelly in Arizona, Kristen Sinema in Arizona, Susan Collins in Maine, maybe John Ossoff, Raphael Warnock in Georgia. Some of these senators that are in truly purple states that have uh, it in their best interest to show that they are bipartisan, you know, if they work together on either side of the aisle, you know, they can really control the agenda of Congress right now. And so I think they're going to be much more empowered to try to do some deal making in a 50 50 Senate. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see what happens there. But, uh, but uh, it, it, in terms of impeachment, which you asked about, um, I think that is, uh, is going to be interesting because both Republicans and Democrats have incentive in making that trial go quickly. There was some reporting that it could be as quick as three days uh, because Republicans don't want to dwell on what was the worst episode in Donald Trump's administration and Democrats don't really want to distract from Joe Biden's agenda. So that could, once it does happen, potentially in two weeks, if that's when it happens, could be a very fast, record fast impeachment trial. Yeah, that's right. It seems like um, they do want to get impeachment uh, done quickly and behind them. But just to, to your first point you made, though, uh, just for any visitor, even journalists going into the Capitol, it'll be interesting to see if it looks much different, uh, you know, kind of like a post 9-11, if you will, just, you know, rooms in the Capitol, areas in the Capitol that once were uh, very open and with, you know, tourist groups and the like uh, to see if there will be limited access, which would be definitely unfortunate. Alex, last question for you. How was the fireworks show? We saw some of your uh, uh, pictures on social media <laughs> from yesterday. It seemed like it was uh, quite the spectacle. And just, you know, last thoughts as well on the inauguration. Yeah, at Alex Michelson on Instagram. If, yeah, at Alex Michaels, if people want to see my video of the fireworks, um, they, uh, fireworks were amazing. You know, it was, it, I haven't seen fireworks this year because, uh, because of the pandemic. It's been a year without much celebration of everything. This uh, inauguration itself was so t toned down rightfully because of everything. But for a few moments, it felt it was nice to feel just joy and awe. Uh, again, and it really was one of the most spectacular fireworks show I've ever seen. Actually, it was in Washington years ago on July 4th, and this is really a great place to see fireworks over the, the monuments here. Um, and last thoughts on the inauguration. I mean, I, I think it's, it's great that we got through it. Uh, you know, there was so much concern about security, so much concern about what could happen. Thankfully, that did not happen. Um, Joe Biden is talking about bipartisanship, talking about unity. Obviously, that's much harder to do when it comes to putting that into practice. Um, but let's hope that he can. We have clearly been at a time when people are screaming at each other, not listening to each other as a country. There's so much vitriol and hatred out there. And if maybe we can, as a nation, take a deep breath um, and have a little bit of bipartisan compromise, wouldn't that be a great thing? All right, Fox 11's Alex Michelson. De yes, definitely easier said than done, for sure, but we appreciate you uh, being our eyes and ears on the ground for all our inauguration coverage. We thank you. We'll see, we'll see you again, probably in L.A. So thanks for being with us on News Now. All right, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Great to see you, Andrew. All right, and that was our last uh, live reporter uh, for the night here on this Thursday night uh, for News Now from Fox. We're going to have a lot of events, though, that we might not have gotten to uh, earlier Excellent. in the day that we want to show right. you or show some of them again because they were they get a raise now? Worthy. Yes. We are going to uh, go to a quick commercial break. We'll see you back here in two minutes on News Now from Fox.